If you went on your computer and you tried to find foods that were rich in vitamin D, your head would be spinning. Okay, because every blog out there is gonna try to compete for your attention and try to tell you that some random raisin is gonna have one iota of vitamin D, and if you only eat six dump trucks full, then you're gonna have enough vitamin D for a half a day. Woohoo! Bottom line, nothing comes close to fish, okay? Fish has a bunch of vitamin D, but I'm not just gonna rattle off a bunch of kinds of fish. I am, but I'm also gonna give you other options too. Let me first recap. Okay, vitamin D is not just about bone health. That is the most, although important, boring thing to talk about. No one is getting excited about the carton of milk that's fortified with vitamin D. Everyone is focused on, well, I wanna lose some fat. I wanna have more muscle. I wanna feel good. Okay? The Journal of Molecular Sciences had published a pretty interesting review journal that took a look at a lot of just overall big pieces when it came down to vitamin D. Okay? It summarized that vitamin D is critical when it comes down to cell apoptosis, which is like the pre-programmed cell death that is required for just proper function and survival of our cells. Uh, it was very important when it came down to cell differentiation, so being able to divide, being able to have our cells actually function. And then when you look at most immune cells, most immune cells have a vitamin D receptor on the surface, indicating that vitamin D is so imperative for our overall immune system. And then one thing that people don't realize is that vitamin D gets sequestered in fat cells. So the more fat that you have on your body, the more vitamin D is locked up. That's why when you see in various studies that when people lose weight without even changing their diet, their vitamin D levels go up because it's no longer being sequestered by the fat cell. Anyway, the point is vitamin D is not a vitamin, it is a hormone and it is critical. One more study and then I'll get into the foods. The Annals of Nutrition and Metabolism had published a study that took a look at elderly patients over the age of 60, okay? And it gave them a mega dose of vitamin D, like it was a 90,000 to 150,000 IUs per month. And it measured that over time, their leg strength significantly improved without ever touching a weight, without even doing any kind of resistance training, okay? Because vitamin D has hormone properties and it can actually help our musculoskeletal system. It's not just strengthening our bones. So you usually wanna aim between like 800 and probably 2000 IUs of vitamin D per day, but you do not just wanna get it from a supplement form. Let me like reiterate, supplement forms are still going to be synthetic forms of vitamin D, which are going to potentially make it so that you are deficient in retinol vitamin A. Okay, then you throw off this whole balance. That's the idea behind eating fish is at least you're typically getting the vitamin A along with it. Anyhow, let's jump into this. The first one, you're gonna hate me for this, but it's the most important. And it's a food slash supplement, and that is cod liver oil. Okay, yes, I know it sounds gross and you're probably gonna turn off this video, but hear me out on it. 250 micrograms per 100 gram serving. Plus, it is ridiculously high in omega-3s and ridiculously high in the bioavailable vitamin A, okay? It is very important in terms of it, like a well-balanced, like perfectly crafted, natural way to get your vitamin D along with the vitamin A that supports that whole process. There's a study that was published in the journal Advances in Therapy that took a look at subjects that had rheumatoid arthritis and it gave them one gram of cod liver oil per day for three months. And two thirds of the subjects within that study said that it was a good treatment option for them. It helped them with their RA. Now, there could be a lot of reasons behind that. The point is, is cod liver oil is beneficial and it's one of the best ways to get vitamin D. That's why it's first on the list. Next up is gonna be cremini mushrooms, portobello mushrooms, and mataki mushrooms. And you're probably thinking, this guy's so full of it. These are plant sources of vitamin D. Plant sources of vitamin D aren't the same. Well, you're right, but there's something that we definitely need to get out in the open. Vitamin D2, which you get from like a plant source, still activates via the sun, UV light. Okay, and it still has very similar properties inside our body. In fact, it's practically undetectable. Okay, the issue is not that it's a different kind of vitamin D so much, it's the fact that our vitamin D transport proteins inside our bodies have a stronger affinity for vitamin D3. So if you were to consume some fish along with some mushrooms, the vitamin D3 from the fish is going to bind to the transport protein, leaving the plant form, the D2, almost useless because it has a stronger affinity. So it doesn't mean that you don't get a benefit out of eating mushrooms. You just have to eat more of them. There's like 1.7x greater like likelihood of the D3 working than the D2 because you need more. So you have to increase that significantly. So point is, Yes, by all means, have the mushrooms, cook with them, load up with them, have as much as you possibly can, because in my opinion, you can't really go wrong with them. Okay, the next up is gonna be canned salmon. Canned salmon is going to have more vitamin D in it than wild caught, like fresh salmon, which sounds crazy, because I would much prefer to eat fresh, but when it comes down to vitamin D content, when it is canned, you're increasing the dry weight. 
And the dry weight is gonna not only increase the essential amino acid dry weight protein content, but it's also going to improve the vitamin D content. Okay, so you are getting that good source. Plus a lot of times when it's canned, it's immediately like it's frozen, right? When they catch it and then they can it. So you end up having less potential oxidation of the polyunsaturated fats that are pretty fragile to begin with. Okay, some of the kinds of canned fish that I recommend like come from a company called Wild Planet. And I put a link down below for Thrive Market. So some of the things, in fact, almost all of the things I'm talking about, whether it's cod liver oil, whether it's canned salmon, some of the other things I'm gonna talk about, you can get through Thrive Market. So you go online, they're a sponsor on this channel. So you go and use that link down below, and then you can sort by different diet types. So if you're doing paleo, if you're doing keto, if you wanna sort by canned goods, uh, that way you can sort for like canned salmon and stuff like that. It makes it that easy. It's the easiest way to shop, and then it gets delivered right to your doorstep within a couple of days. Super convenient, and because they're a sponsor on this channel, if you check them out, you can save 25% off your first order and also get a free gift when you use that link down below. So it is, by all means, the place to get your pantry staples and get your grocery shopping done. So that link's down below. This next one is awesome for sushi fans. Eel, specifically smoked eel. Same kind of idea with like the canned salmon. When eel is smoked, you get a higher dry weight, okay? So you're looking at a difference between like 26, 27 micrograms of vitamin D per 100 gram serving versus like 38. So it's a pretty significant amount. Now, whether you are low carb or fasting or whatever, eel is still a good option. Just be careful that the eel sauce that they use isn't totally loaded with sugar. If you're getting sushi, you can still have them make it without the sauce. A lot of times the eel doesn't always have the sauce, so you can get it without that, but a little bit's not gonna hurt you either way. Next up is halibut. Halibut is unique, okay? There are other fish that have higher levels of vitamin D. The reason that I am a fan of halibut is because of the high selenium content. So when it comes down to vitamin D, when it comes down to like these larger fish, you typically wanna be careful with mercury, right? Okay, well, what we haven't really talked about in the world of mercury out in this world too much is that mercury binds to selenium and halibut has a very high level of selenium in it. So a lot of this evidence is starting to look at things called like selenoproteins, which come from selenium and play a role in terms of how our liver deals with mercury, right? The bottom line is that our mercury that we consume, it binds to selenium and it has a huge affinity for selenium. A million times it's next in line. So basically you have mercury that binds to selenium. Okay, if selenium wasn't there, it would bind to sulfur. It is one million times more likely to bind to selenium, has a one million times higher affinity for selenium than the next in line of sulfur. So if you have sufficient amounts of selenium, you have a better chance of being able to bind and lock up that mercury and deal with it better and not have it cross through the blood brain barrier and cause issues. Because mercury is an issue, I'm not discounting that. But if you're deficient in selenium, it's potentially a bigger issue. So get your vitamin D in without the mercury. We have to jump over to eggs for a second. There was a study that was published in the journal Nutrition that showed that hens that were outside in the sun ended up having eggs that had three to four times more vitamin D content. Here's the issue, when you look at an egg yolk, there is about five to six micrograms of vitamin D per 100 gram serving. Okay, one given egg yolk is like 15 to maybe 20 overall like grams, right? You're not getting 100, so you'd have to eat quite a few. So in order to even get to the adequate amount of vitamin D that you would need in a day, you would need to eat 15 to 20 eggs. Granted, that data is not necessarily referencing the same data that comes from the journal Nutrition that implies that if they're pasture-raised hens, they might have three to four X the amount. The simple fact of the matter is, is that you probably shouldn't try to get all your vitamin D from X. okay? It is a land source that is not going to be as effective as what you would get from a fish source, okay? So in that case, maybe get maybe a third of your vitamin D from eggs. If you wanna go that route, just make sure you're going with the pasture-raised eggs so they have that higher level there. Next one is going to be smoked trout. And I say this because there's a big area of the world that likes lake fish more than sea fish, right? And lake fish is generally kind of poo-pooed upon. Like people for some reason don't like to, I don't know, say that it has nutritional value. 
Trout has a very high level of vitamin D considering it's a lake fish. But if you smoke it once again, which it's a lot easier, like even Costco has a tremendous smoked trout option, you're getting a higher vitamin D level. So that's a great option there. Plus you're looking at very low if no mercury content because you're looking at lake fish versus sea fish. And the last one that I want to throw in there is sort of a snack just to kind of consistently keep vitamin D levels a little bit higher. It's going to be dried shiitake mushrooms. Again, you can find these at Costco. You can find them at stores now. Okay, it's a more concentrated dry weight, so you're getting more of that vitamin D. Just remember, it's that vitamin D2, which isn't going to be as effective. You're going to have to consume quite a bit of it. You're not going to get your vitamin D intake for the day by eating a bag of dried, freeze-dried mushrooms, but you're at least contributing to the bottom line a little bit. And at the end of the day, at least you're getting some beta-glucans, which helps out the gut as well. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. Don't forget to check out Thrive Market and a big thank you to them and I'll see you tomorrow.